to uh, Minnesota Network of SEOs uh, awesome mastermind meeting. Uh, if you're if you're checking in with us via Google Hangout, uh, definitely please use the Q and A section to type in some questions, and we'll get to those questions. We're very fortunate tonight to have uh, a great group of speakers, and I'm not just talking about myself. I'm not counting myself in that at all. <laughs> uh, um, so we've got. Uh, I will read because I will forget. So Janet Johnson is here, and she's going to be doing a wonderful presentation on uh, Hangouts and YouTube and how that affects SEO. And we've also got Ron J. Miller here, and Ron J. is going to be doing uh, an excellent presentation on social media and SEO. And then we have three amazing board members from MN Search. So we've got Sue Manos and Dustin here who are going to just kind of handle an open forum and answer questions and talk about the future of SEO and anything that you might want to know there. They're, they're going to be here to answer for you. So we'll get around to that too. Uh, and if you couldn't tell, my presentation, and I'll get out of the way, is uh, SEO in 2014 where we are uh, and really where we're going. And so any of, any of you folks who have been in this industry or worked in SEO or have heard about SEO knows that nothing stays the same. It changes every day, every single day. Uh, I, I love the fact that Google's algorithm has 200 different factors and they update it three to four times a day. And you know, it, 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 you've got to stay on top of it. And it's the same with paid search and display. And really, digital is just this amazing, evolving creature. So. Good stuff. Anyway, won't bore you with that anymore. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name's Adam Dintz, and that's my caricature. Uh, plug dimpleart.com if you want a good caricature. They do it for you at a great price. So uh, awesome, awesome stuff there. I'm the director of Earn Media at Deluxe Corporation, who's sponsoring this event tonight. And I'm also the director of PR, communications, and social media for Minnesota Search Engine Marketing Association. Prior to that, I worked in uh, New York City uh, at McCann World Group. I was VP Director of Search and Content Strategy and worked across a variety of awesome brands. And for that, I crossing, uh, contribute to a, a variety of different blogs and co-wrote the SEO section of Digital Impact, uh, written by Jeff Ramsey, the CEO of eMarketer. So um, good book. It's outdated. I wouldn't recommend reading it now because none of it makes sense anymore. Uh, I shouldn't say that, Jeff. It's a great book. You're probably not watching this, but I don't know. It's really good. Sure, you are on YouTube, remember? That's right, YouTube. <laughs> All right, so we'll just get past that slide. So uh, these are just a sample of the brands that I've worked on in my career. And I can tell you it's, it's really been awesome being able to work on big brands and, and, and see businesses transform through search engine marketing. It's been great. Uh, and now you know, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be at the Lux Corporation where we focus on small businesses. And I never thought I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy working with small businesses as much as I do when it comes to search engine marketing. But you know, small business owners really understand how business works. Small business owners don't just own their business, but they're the chief marketing officers. They're the chief financial uh, CFOs of their, of their business, right? They handle a variety of different things. They even crawl on their floor to avoid being on the camera. <laughs> so uh, really, really amazing people. And so fortunate enough to be at the Lux doing that. And you know, one of the interesting things is whether you're working on a big enterprise company account or a small business, a lot of it's the same. Small businesses and, and big businesses all have the same needs. They want to drive sales. They want to drive uh, footsteps into their into their stores, right? Uh, they want to get leads, and they want to build their brand. So SEO is great for both large and small businesses alike. So regardless of what you're working on, there's going to be a lot of stuff in here for you. So um, today's agenda, here's what we're going to talk about. Number one is the search landscape. Uh, two, we're going to talk about new search engines and what they mean. Uh, three, why search is important. We're going to breeze through all that. Uh, then we're going to talk about how to win at SEO. And they're just going to be things that are going to work. I'm not going to go through a lot of the, the BS that you'll hear, or fake things that people pontificate on working and don't work. I'm going to tell you what works, OK? And then last but not least, uh, we're going to talk about very briefly the future of SEO, because our awesome panel is going to talk about that. And so I'm uh, very excited to hear that. So let's talk about the search landscape. Uh, most of you know the difference between paid and organic search, so I don't want to differentiate that. But I do want to share with you some of the newer things that we're, we're seeing in the search results. So earlier, uh, before we started this uh, presentation, we were talking a little bit about product uh, listing ads. But uh, product listing ads are there. You've probably seen them. They're pay to play, right? It's, it's, it's a Google uh, advertising product. They used to be organic, meaning you didn't have to pay for them. Uh, but now you do. So you'll see those when you're looking for products. You'll see product listing ads. Uh, also, AdWords is changing a lot, too. Um, Google, for a long time, was experimenting with different colors of background and ads. Uh, then they started lightening the background of ads. So uh, and they look like organic results because people don't like clicking on paid results, right? 
And so then uh, they got a little hand slap, and so now they're testing out this new feature where they're putting ad next to all of their search results. Mm -hmm. So that's changing. I expect we'll see even more changes with paid search uh, in, in the search results landscape. And then vertical search results. So Google's getting really good at doing other people's business for them. So for instance, if you go look for a flight, whether it's from Minneapolis to somewhere else or wherever you're looking, the first result that you're going to get, which almost looks like it's an organic search result, but it's really a paid, is Google Flights. So that's one example. Um, and you can compare flights. Uh, the, the nice thing about it is it's only the brands that are willing to pay for it. So you may be missing out on, on, on brands that aren't willing to pay to play, although most major airlines are participating. And then there's uh, credit cards. So if you're looking for a good credit card, um, brands pay to get in this. And essentially, you can compare credit cards right on Google. And then when you're ready to go buy, then they send it to you, the financial institution. But again, that's sort of new. It's, it's, and it's evolving. So we're seeing that happen. Um, and Google's really good at finding out what works organically and then getting you to pay for it. And in fact, Amazon was really pissed when Google created uh, those PLA ads, right? Because essentially, they're forcing <laughs> Amazon now to pay Google to sell their products. And that's what Amazon does. And they tried to fight it, and they gave up, and now they're paying for it, too. So everyone gives in at some point to Google. Um, so Larry Page, if you're watching this. All right. So, so SEO, the organic landscape. So let's talk about that. So local carousels, we all know what those are, right? Pizza, my favorite food. Google it. Get all kinds of cool stuff. <coughs> What's nearby? We've got the places results. Uh, if you've got a, a bricks and mortar store or a physical location, this is your bread and butter. This is what's going to get foot traffic into your store. Uh, whether you're Walmart or your Bob's uh, tool shop, right? You want to be listed there. Knowledge graph results. Uh, this is really fascinating stuff. See, Google, uh, Google used to be sort of a portal of sorts, right? You'd search for something, and then there'd be a list of results, and you'd click, and you'd go to someone else, another website, to get information. Google now is trying to give you as much information as it can within the search results page. And a lot of publishers are getting upset about it, but you know, in the past, if you search for the New England Patriots, my team, um, you might find some images and a link to Wikipedia to go check them out or their website, and you'd go to their website to get the information. Now Google's displaying as much information as they can on the search results page, and that's only going to continue to, to, to be more prominent in the future. News results. Those aren't new, but in-depth articles are. Right? So now when you're searching for things, you're going to see uh, below the fold, maybe towards the bottom of the page, some in-depth results or articles. So they want to give you news, but they also want to give you articles or blog posts. And you can optimize your pages now to be found in those in-depth results. So lots of good stuff's happening there. Rich snippets uh, make your search results pretty. Back when I was in New York, we, we came up with this great idea to sell it to big brands, and we called it uh, the SERP makeover. And so we want to make your search results pretty. And they said, oh, how do you do that? We want to do that. And so I made a lot of money selling brands that stuff, although I probably shouldn't say that. Um, personalized results. This one's really important. Um, so this is Bing. If I Bing the term, uh, and that's the term, Bing. If I Bing the term Billy Joel, and I can see regular search results along with uh, what my friends are posting on Facebook and Twitter. right? So they're starting to personalize that. If we look at Google, there's a lot of ways that Google's personalizing search results. Everyone's search results look different now. Um, but here's an example. I belong to the SEO group on uh, Google+. And so I search for a term, WordPress themes. There's a post on, from the, the WordPress community, and now that returns in my search results. But when I'm signed out of my Google account, that doesn't show up. So uh, personalized search results are changing, right? So it's important to be found there. And last but not least, there's preemptive search, meaning Google's trying to answer your questions before you even ask them. And so if you've got a mobile phone, uh, if you're on iOS and you download Google Cards, Google Now, the app, uh, you'll see you'll know what temperature it is, if there's a storm warning coming. As soon as you turn on your phone, you'll see it. Uh, it's, I think it's by default on Android. I get them. Um, you can see your favorite, you know, if your favorite musician is coming to town, you're going to get a notification on your phone. You don't even have to search for anything anymore. So Google's getting really good at that. They rolled it out on mobile, and now it's on desktop. Uh, that in fact, the new version of Chrome that's going to be coming out, this is going to be built into it. So very exciting stuff. And there are new search engines that abound. If you haven't checked out Facebook uh, graph search yet, it's awesome. So. Just a simple term, restaurants nearby, I get a list of restaurants. I can see which ones of my friends like them. And I can get a map, and I can go find out where they are. Right? So Google's not the only game in town when it comes to local search. Um, there's some new ones that are, are, are coming around. Google Plus Search, restaurants in Minneapolis. I can check out all kinds of restaurants here and see what people are saying about them. Right? So they're social search engines. This one's really cool. Pinterest, believe it or not, is a search engine, too. So uh, I Pinterested 
or whatever you're calling it, restaurants in Minneapolis. And here's some ideas. I clicked on uh, the Fire Lake Grill House, and I get a result that has a picture of the food, which looks really good. And then uh, I can go to Open Table and make a reservation right from Pinterest, and I have a map of where it's located. So there are new search engines that are, are and, and that's only going to continue as, as technology advances quickly. So you know, the net of it all is that the landscape's changing, and you know, we've got to stay on top of it. Uh, and search has never been more important than it is today. Uh, we know that 83% of all online activities begin with a search. So eight out of every 10 times someone goes online, they're going to do a search, whether it's on Google or somewhere else. We know that there's uh, over 50% of Americans. I love that that number, by the way, because it's like over 50%. Yeah, I weigh over 100 pounds, right? <laughs> so, but at least at a minimum, it's one out of every two people conduct a search, right? Uh, every month. And then 23 billion Americans, or there are 23 billion online searches every month conducted by Americans. The really cool number is Google shares that 20% of daily searches have never been searched before. Uh, that's a really powerful number, if you think about what that means. So 20 out of every 100 searches have never been searched before. And that means that people are, are becoming smarter about searching. They're becoming more sophisticated. They're not finding what they're looking for, uh, or they want to find other options, and they're looking for new things. So we talk about that long tail, right? Uh, so that's really important. So if you're a search marketer, it's important to know how people are searching, what they're thinking about, what they're saying. Uh, not just on Google, lots of different search engines. So we talked about Facebook, but here, Yelp, right? Yelpers, anyone? Yelp, Yelp. Uh, lots of different ones. So if you're only focusing on Google, you're missing a big piece of the puzzle. So my recommendation, especially with all the changes going on, think about using more of the internet than just Google. Be a web marketer. OK, search is, is uh, it says here it's number two, but it's actually very close to being tied to number one of being the most popular online activity. Um, and to, to close this part out, 94% of clicks happen on the natural or the organic results. So that's why we're going to focus on organic today. It's really important to, to be successful in that organic space. So how do you win at SEO? So um, I, I just wanted to slide because I love that picture of the dog <laughs> cooking the cat in a recipe. It's not really cooking the cat. Uh, if he is, he deserves his own show on the Food Network. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to go through all these. This is, this is really what you need uh, in order to win an organic search today. And we're just going to walk through each one of those really quickly and cover off on those. Make sure you understand that. And, and then we'll almost be done. So if your website looks like Where's Waldo, you're in a lot of trouble, right? <laughs> So if people can't find the content on your website, guess what's going to happen? Search engines aren't going to be able to find it. Search engines crawl websites like people do, and they want to provide the best possible result. So if you're having a hard time, or your customers are having a hard time finding what they're looking for, fix it. So here are just some uh, keys. It should be engaging. People should want to interact with your site, right? People should love being on your <coughs> website. So much, it should be clear paths. So your navigation should be clear. People should be able to find what they're looking for very, very easily. Um, it should be shareable, meaning someone likes your website so much, they want to share it. They want to share it with their friends. It means that much to them. It should be bookmarkable. You want those people to come back to your website, right, or to your client's website. So you want to make sure you're giving people a reason to come back for more. Mobilized. You want to make sure that your site renders well on a mobile phone. Uh, I think we're going to hear later uh, about how important mobile is, right? So if your website's not showing up on mobile devices, you're in a world of hurt. And uh, well, I'm not going to go there. Uh, test it. You want to test it. So far too many people launch a website and go, "This is great. It works fantastic," and it sucks. And they think it's great, but it's not really great because they haven't tested it. So if you're a small business, ask your customers to review your site. Give them a, a discount if they give you an honest, you know, if they give you honest feedback. Uh, if you're working with big enterprise sites, they've got to have some kind of UAT or testing or have a user experience team. Or if you have a user experience team at your agency, test it. Do focus groups. Do A-B tests. Make sure things are working, right? The better it is, the better that you'll do in search. And then optimize it. So once you've tested it, make sure you're making the right fixes to make that website better. High quality content. So on our website, shameless plug for Deluxe, uh, we've got a variety of different kinds of content out there. We've got ebooks, we've got videos, we've got um, text content, infographics, you name it, we have it. So um, and you know we, we try to write for who our customers are. So our customers are small businesses. They're not marketers. They're not chief marketing officers, right? They, it, it, they own they own lawn care. They own um, their accounts, right? So we want to write to that audience. We don't want to say 
you know, how do you increase your page rank uh, to boost your Google search results? They're not going to understand that, right? They're not going to want to understand that. So your content should be informative, authoritative, right? So you may have great content, but why should I trust what you have to say? Who are you? So it should be authoritative. You should solve a problem. So if you're, if you're writing your content um, and you're not solving a problem, then what's the point of the content? Uh, it may not solve a problem, but it may answer a question. Right? So it should either answer a question or solve a problem. If, if you're looking at content in your site and go, my, co my site would be just as great without this content, you may not need it. <laughs> and so there's also uh, this movement of people just writing content to write because it's the new buzzword, content marketing. More is really le uh, less is really more, right? So make sure, you're just, make sure you're publishing the right stuff at the right time for the right audience. It should be grammatically sound. Uh, this is uh, true even for search engines. Google is able to read your content and it knows when you have spelling errors. But if, if your grammar is bad, are people going to trust what you're saying in your content? Fortunately for me, I have, uh, an edit I have editors that get to read my stuff and fix it before it goes live. So very fortunate for that. But definitely make sure you do a grammar check. Diverse assets. Don't just do text. Don't just do uh, you know, a text and some images. But make, give, give people different uh, tools to use. Uh, infographics are great. Um, we were at the Student Ad Summit last week, uh, where Sam uh, is on the board. And we had a, a CEO uh, from CPNG. And I, I keep talking about it. Or CPMB, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Christian Porter and Wolofsky. What she said. So <laughs> he was great. His agency created Domino's Pizza Order Tracker, right? So when you sign in, you get to see where your pizza is. That's freaking awesome. That's great content, right? So you really want to make a, a diverse set of assets to give someone everything, everything for someone, right? Uh, and then shareable. You want to make sure that your content's shareable. People are going to like it so much that they're going to want to share it. Last but not least, link bait. I know this is a really bad word uh, in, in SEO these days. Um, but what I mean by link bait is it should be so good that someone's going to want to link to it from their website. We know that links are really important to SEO. I'm not talking about infographics that have embedded URLs and someone's going to copy it and there's going to be a hidden link in there somewhere. But you know, if you've got an amazing video on your page, people are going to want to link to it. So just think about those things when you're building out your content. So how do you optimize that content once you have it? right? So uh, number one, optimize your URLs. Uh, make sure you have good keywords in those URLs. Really, really, really important. You're going to hear people say URLs aren't important anymore, or as important as they once were. Everything counts. So optimize your URLs. Page titles. So in your HTML code, you'll have a page title. If you're in WordPress, you have an opportunity to enter that. Um, optimize your page titles. Use your most important keywords at the very beginning of the page title. Google reads from right to left, top to down, uh, top to bottom. Bing does the same thing. So make sure you're using your most important keywords at the very beginning of your elements and then at the very top of your content. Right. Um, also, I've included, on, if you follow me on Twitter, at Adam Dince, um, I've posted this presentation. Uh, I have just tweeted it out before we, we got here. And I have links to WordPress plugins. So if you're using WordPress as, as a, a web host or a web platform, you can get um, all kinds of good plugins to help you make this easier on your site as you're optimizing your content. So OK, again, at A-D-A-M-D-I-N-C-E, shameless plug. OK, moving on. Um, so there's your H1. Uh, so your H1 is your primary headline. Uh, you should have an H1 tag. If you don't on your website, ask your webmaster to incl include it. Uh, if you're using, um, it, it, it comes default with WordPress. But if you're using a weird theme <coughs> that doesn't have H1s in the CSS, it may not have it. So you might want to talk to your webmaster about getting an H1 in there. Uh, you want to make sure that the most important content you have is at the very top, where your content starts. Google assumes, as it's reading your content, that you're going to put the most important stuff on top. And as you kind of trail down, the lesser important things are, are at the bottom of the page. So you don't want to have your most important content down here and the you know, fluff up top. Keep the fluff for the bottom. All right, image alt text. Make sure that your images have descriptive alt text that are accurate uh, to what that image is. Keyword optimization. Make sure you're including keywords in your content. Uh, don't worry about keyword density. It should read naturally. You don't want to stuff keywords. But make sure you're including them. Uh, H2. H2 is not as important as H1. It's, again, it's a CSS tag, or it's, a, it's, a, it's an HTML tag. That's going to help uh, Google pays attention to your title, H1, H2. It, it thinks that your H1 is your primary headline. Your H2 is your subheadline. So make sure you're using keywords in that H2 tag. Bullet optimization. Search engines look at formatting. So if you've got words that are bolded, underlined, um, different color, bulleted, I think I said bulleted, 
the Department of Redundancy Department, uh, make sure you're optimizing your bullets. Really important. And then, again, more uh, videos. If you have videos on your, on your page, you can include transcripts. Be creative with how you do that. You can use CSS to include uh, in your transcripts, or uh, if you're using um, uh, schema markup for your videos, you can leave a very descript, uh, description of the video in the, in the description tag on schema markup. And uh, again, more image alt text. Moving on, optimize internal architecture. When you're building your website, you want to make sure that you sit down and you draw it out before you actually build it, right? So it's the old carpenter's model, measure twice, cut once. So make sure it makes sense on paper, and then, then build it. Don't, go, don't build it first and then go, wait, what do we do, and start scratching things off and fix it. Um, make sure that you've got keywords in your navigation. So when Google crawls links, it crawls the word that's in the link, and it goes, oh, so this page is about logo design. And then when it follows that link to the page, it expects that whatever content's on that page is going to be about logo design. So make sure you're including that. That's why Google penalizes sites that, that have a lot of links pointing to them from outside sources that are rich in keywords, because they think you're trying to game them. Keywords matter. Words matter, especially in your navigation. Really important. And internally, you're telling Google here what pages are most important to you by how much you link to them internally. So make sure you're really doing a good job there. And then also within your content, link internally, internally on your content. So if you're writing an article about something and you've got another resource that's related, link to it, right? And use keywords in that link. It'll help. Optimize HTML. This Yoast WordPress SEO tool is just the best thing in the world. So if you're not using Yoast and WordPress, you're missing out. So definitely uh, um, use it. But make sure, uh, and I, I don't want to go through all the elements here. It's, it's on Twitter. If you download it, it's there. But make sure you've got these different tags in your HTML. They're very, very important to Google. Um, if you're working with e-commerce and you have really ugly URLs or you're, um, you're adding a lot of parameters for paid search or for display advertising, whatever, you want to make sure the canonical tag is there. But again, uh, if you're using WordPress SEO, all that stuff's built in. Uh, otherwise, um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me later on, on these tags and we can talk about it. Schema markup. Everyone here hears schema, or at least someone talk about it. This is a great tool called schemacreator.org. Uh, and essentially, it's just a, a, a GUI where you enter in your, your information and it creates actual schema markup for you. So you can send it to your IT team or upload it your, update it yourself. <coughs> if you're using WordPress, there's an actual um, uh, plugin. So uh, you can do it right in WordPress. You don't have to bother anyone who's coding it. It's really easy to use. But this is really important. So uh, just to give you just a, a two seconds, well, probably not two seconds, but a quick explanation of what schema is. Schema markup helps search engine understand what the content on your page is. So if you have a product name on a page, Google doesn't know that's a product name. It's just words to Google, right? But if you're using schema markup, the HTML tags that wrap your product name will tell Google it's a product name. It'll tell Bing it's a product name. It'll tell Yahoo. Uh, schema was created by Google, Bing, and Yahoo to help them better understand content. So the more that you're using schema markup, the more information you're going to get to the search engines. And you'll end up getting these really cool <laughs> marked up uh, search results uh, in, in Google. For sure. So um, Julie just started uh, writing at the Lux, and she's already got her picture there, which is really cool. It's called Google Authorship. Um, you know, we've got uh, all recipes has ratings. So if you're using ratings, it's great stuff. Ticketmaster. Um, so these really pop. They stand <coughs> out. And this is Google rewarding sites for giving them more information about their about their content. Uh, verified profiles. I don't want to spend too much time on this. There's a link again. Yoast WordPress will do this for you. Um, if you've got a regular website, Google Plus Publisher and Authorship. Publisher verifies that you own the site through Google, so it tells Google this, I own this site. Authorship uh, is attributed to the person who's writing. So, and if you're writing, if you're, if you're blogging in a lot of different places, you want Google to understand that you're the author of multiple articles across multiple sites. That's going to build your individual credibility with Google, and it's going to make you a more valuable asset to the world, uh, to the, not to the world, but well, you're already a valuable asset to the world, but to other sites that might want you to write for them, right? So yeah, if you get Google authorship, there's this invisible thing called author rank that may be out there where you're building up this credibility. So as you build that up and you write for other sites, you give your uh, authorship, your, your equity to that site. So it's really important if you're not doing it to start doing it now. Uh, Geo-optimization. If you've got local businesses and you want search engines to understand where you're located, uh, here's some really good things to do. Number one, your page title. Remember, we talked about 
the page title and having keywords right up front. This guy's really smart. He's got Shoreview family uh, law right up front, right? So Google, the first thing Google sees is, oh, this is a Shoreview family law. He's got a phone number right underneath, right at the very top, a phone number there. Um, as you dig deeper into the home page, everything uh, encased in a red box is local information. Again, local signals to Google, local signals to Bing. Um, as you scroll down a little bit further, he's got a, a testimonial. And look at that. Not the person's name, but the city and state that they're in. Right? Gives that more local credit. <laughs> also, at the very bottom, he's got his address and the footer. So every page at the bottom has his, his address. And then he's chalked in here all the cities and areas that he serves. So this is a really smart way of doing it. What a lot of people will do is create individual pages for all the different cities that they service. But they don't have a physical location in those, uh, in the, for, for those cities. So what ends up happening is there's the same page over and over again, which is the city and state different. And Google hates that. You'll get a penalty if you do that. You'll get nailed for it. So don't do that. If, if, if you're going to Google smart enough to understand if you're listing these locations and you've optimized your page locally, that this is, this is where you are. And don't, if, if you're working with an agency, don't let them sell you on creating those pages. Uh, Off-site optimization, we're gonna, we talk about links being really good. You need to get as many high-quality links as you can. Uh, it's sort of a, a popularity contest, right? So in your high school, if you're friends with the popular kids, you're popular. If you sat at the table all by yourself, no one thought you were popular. Well, Google's the same way. The more authoritative sites that link to you, the better you're going to do. So, uh, and if you're local, you want to get links uh, from local directories, things like that. So that guy who we saw uh, in the previous slide, he's got links in all the right places. Uh, except, notice here, his address is different than, than these two, right? consistent as possible because it's not just your Google Plus page that's going to help you get listed in those local results. As Google crawls these local directories, it's going to make sure that your addresses are as similar as possible. And if there's some confusion, Google may not list you there. People get confused. I created my Google Plus page or my Google Places page, and I'm not showing up mm -hmm. in places. Well, have you checked the rest of the web to make sure that your address lines up? It's a really important thing to do. Offsite optimization, Google Plus, Facebook. This guy here, um, he's got. Uh, 145 different uh, reviews on his site. That's powerful stuff. You know, like you you get reviews like that, and people are using Facebook and doing Facebook search, right? That's going to be great. Now, this guy's page here is public, so uh, Facebook. I'm going to dispel a rumor here. Uh, I don't care how much you do on Facebook; it's not going to help you with SEO. Same with Twitter. Google has no access to Facebook data. Has no access to Twitter data. Uh, if if there's a Facebook page that's public, like this guy's right here. It'll crawl this page. It'll see the content on it. But this page is the same as any other page on the, on, on, on the World Wide Web. And the more people that link to this Facebook page, the better this page will, more equity this will have, right? So if this guy links to you, great. You get a little bit of that. But aside from, aside from that, don't, don't, don't let anyone convince you that likes and shares uh, on Facebook will do anything for your search rankings, because it's not, it's not the case. Uh, same with Twitter. Um, they used to have access, Google used to have access to Twitter feed. It doesn't have it anymore to the API. And someday it may, and then it will help SEO hopefully. But as for right now, um, there, there are limited benefits. We'll hear more about what some of the benefits are, though, in a, in a presentation in a few minutes. Um, and uh, this is here, too. So Twitter doesn't have any SEO benefits in the fact that it's not going to get you ranked any higher anytime sooner. However, Google crawls the web, and it crawls tweets. So if you're looking to get new pages indexed, or crawled by Google, tweeted out. Really quick way. When I when I I've never built a link in my life to my website, to my blog, and just by using social media, and this is the way social will help, is that peop, more people, the more people who see it, the more they'll link to you and put a link on your website. So and it'll help Google crawl. When I when I post a blog post um, and I tweet it out, it's literally indexed 15, 20 minutes later. It's amazing how fast it is. So uh, definitely offsite optimization is important. And then last but not least, give it time. SEO is earned media. Uh, Pay-per-click display, it's paid. So as soon as you start paying for it, you're there. <coughs> Google, with Google and Bing, you've got to earn their trust that you are the absolute best page for that number one, number two ranking. So give it time. Don't get frustrated if you don't see it happen overnight. So a couple quick slides. What does the future hold for SEO? Google Plus is going to become the home for all Google products. We're already seeing it for now. You have to have a Google. If, if you're going to leave a comment on YouTube, you've got to have a Google Plus account. If you're going to sign up for a new Gmail account, you're going to have a Google Plus account. If you want to create a Places page, it's going to be in Google Plus. 
Um, and soon search will be in there. Google has made their intentions very public of what they're hoping to do. Um, search will get even more personalized. We talked about that earlier. Personalized search results is going to continue to happen. Uh, search engines will become knowledge engines. So this whole notion of semantic search in the knowledge graph, we'll continue to see uh, more of that happen in search results. Uh, authorship. This is the only thing I'll read from uh, Eric Schmidt, his book, The New Digital Age. Within search results, information tied to verified online profiles will be ranked higher than content without such verification. So what Google's saying is there's a big cost to being anonymous. If you're not willing to put yourself out there and let the social world know who you are, in the future it's going to come back to bite you. So make sure you're building that your, your online brand for yourself and your business. Uh, Google will acquire more verticals, so we haven't seen the, the last of Google school <coughs> domination on search results. Uh, and then other sites will become more like search uh, engines. We've seen Facebook do it. We've seen Pinterest do it. So that's going to continue to happen as well. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll, we'll save the Q&A till later. Uh, I'm going to invite Jim back up, and uh, we'll do some <coughs> introductions, and then we'll back to introduce the next act. Well, so thank you. What I'm going to say, though, I mean, you have at Adam Dents as your Twitter. That's one of the questions. Yes, at Adam Dents is my Twitter account. And your presentations, these presentations are on Twitter? I just tweeted out the link before. We, so if you go to my Twitter page, okay. it's the last tweet cool. that I, I have. Uh, so, it's a link to my chair. Uh, Pasan, Pasandu uh, Udara. And Joseph D, if you're watching, um, that's Adam's Twitter right there. And mm -hmm. follow him on Twitter, and you can get access to this. So those are the only questions I had. Oh, well, good. That's good news. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Um, <laughs> the value of, uh, yeah. of our meetup group is the fact that we are making a very very diligent effort to build community. So in order to build community, we get we have to get to know each other. We want to get to know each other. And um, so our signature for our meetup groups is the fact that we take the time to, to get everyone introduced. And so therefore, what we'd like to do is to have a 20-second elevator pitch where you introduce yourself. And we can do that in less than 10 minutes. So. With that, my name is Jim Jurowitz. I'm with the Brainstorm Company. I'm a strategy consultant. I take your idea, I incubate it into a successful business. Me? OK. Um, for those of you that have maybe seen the Google Hangouts in the past, I'm Dale from LTR Digital. So you're probably already familiar with me through the previous Hangouts. Um, partner Pat Devine back there at the, on the back wall. Uh, we're both LTR Digital over in Bloomington, Eden Prairie, whatever it is. Uh, digital agency. Uh, what? 20 seconds. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being here tonight and for taking time. People from other agencies that have come here, thanks for being here to network with people that are getting into the industry and all that. Thank you very much, folks. Sorry, I don't know your name. Hi, Ken Hopperstead. I'm a retired IT manager, kind of looking at getting back into IT a little bit, looking at uh, search engine optimization, mobile marketing. Thank you. I'm Michelle Webb. I own an e-commerce site. Jeannie Hill with uh, Hill Web Creations, and I do a lot of Google, Google Analytics and um, manage the content for small and medium businesses. Thank you. Hi, Griffin Rohr. I'm with Snap Agency. I do strategy, <coughs> strategy development uh, and just do everything uh, online marketing. Liz, Liz Wartman. I am, uh, have a marketing communications background, and I'm kind of dancing in the digital marketing arena and looking for new opportunities. Ann Geske, I'm a writer and editor and looking for opportunities with more web content writing. Okay. Daniel Hollerung, I work at Best Buy on the AV testing team, but I have a long background in SEO. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Clay Johnston, I'm a web developer and uh, freelance and here to make your jobs easier. Cool. <laughs> Mark Hines, I work at Go Kart Labs, we're a digital innovation lab. Thank you. Marianne. Marianne King, MK and Co. I'm a graphic designer and I do presentation on web and all that. And I just figured I need to have SEO for my And class. you're a distance driver from where? Monticello. There you go. <laughs> okay. Dan. Uh, Dan Grant, uh, freelance <laughs> web builder. Sean Bjarger from Micro and IX. I'm an IT guy. Susan. Uh, Susan Stokey, Nifty Marketing. Um, I'm also on the board with Adam and these gentlemen um, as events director, um, but I'm a senior SEO strategist. Uh, Dustin Thompson, I'm an independent consultant. 
uh, work with clients with digital strategy, a lot of search, and like Susan said, I'm a director at Minnesota Search. My name is Kali Jackis. I am. Uh, I work for Pine Law. I'm, uh, you know, mainly in SEO right now. Do uh, product development, SEO related product development in a legal vertical. Uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm in search best director and uh, good meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Pat Devine, Dale's uh, business partner. Uh, three main areas we focus on: inbound marketing, social media strategies, and paid media strategies, and we basically. Use analytics to help us find audiences for our clients. Great. Jenny Wright, I uh, currently test computer hardware and software, but find um, digital marketing very fascinating. So I'm just here to learn and um, talking to you on. Good. <laughs> I'm Jasmine Russell. Um, I work with Navitor. I'm a digital marketing analyst, so I'm all things web, data, and Ron J. Yep, New Town. Just relocated yeah. for New. Uh, I'm Ron J. Miller. You're going to find out more about me later. David Wayne, startup, um, a startup guy, so that's what I do. You can find out more about me later, too, because it's too much to cover. <laughs> <laughs> You're not presenting, David. Yeah. <laughs> Next Nicole. time. Nicole Cirillo. I am up and coming SEO and currently interview. Um, Samantha Steinbring, go by Sam. I work with Adam at Deluxe. So I'm an SEO specialist. I'm um, Maya Wheeler. I guide myself in a different career. So I love to multitask. Currently, I'm working for myself. And um, I do interpret and translation mainly helping businesses. Um, for those who don't speak English or have limited ability anyway. I'm trying to expand to uh, online presence. By the way, Russia lost their hockey game today. <laughs> I'm Lisa Celine, Lisa Celine.com, and I do social media training and consulting. Janet Johnson and social media. I can't go here more. <laughs> Chase Ryman, Tonka Teltech. We do a uh, smart business web, which is next gen web targeted for small business and startups, and uh, we're learning everything SEO and inbound marketing that we can. So, one of the other things this group is going to do in the future is to create a uh, job opportunity search, job site type of thing. Um, I have a contract with Pearson, so we do workforce training. So. Um, I think it's real important that uh, networking and referring people to jobs, especially freelancers, um, there's a lot of work out there that we're not all hearing about. So mm -hmm. we will incorporate that into our business. Okay. All right. You want again? Uh, I want again. You got to say something though? <laughs> no, I'm just going to say is as as you can see, you know this this group is just sort of SEOs, but there's a lot of disciplines and a lot of talents represented by the people that are coming together. So through the group, let let us know. We always say this in every hangout that we do. If there are things that you want to learn about, things that you want to hear, things that you're interested in, please express that on the on the, the meetup group. So as we put this together, we can find speakers and we can address that going forward. Because it's going to get to a point where our hangouts are going to be kind of dry and boring because we you know we just keep on talking about the same stuff. I don't want to do that. I want to keep them interesting to everybody. So they won't be boring. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get people from around the country to to do this with us. So. All right, well, talking about keeping it boring, I'm back up here. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, this is a little bit more entertaining. I think it will be for sure. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Janet E. Johnson. So I'm just going to read a couple things about Janet real quick. Uh, so Janet is a 13-year veteran of social media and internet marketing. She consults and trains businesses on everything from branding and social media optimization to video marketing and SEO. She has clients from, the sm from small business locations to nationwide to worldwide clients. Her clients include authors, orthodontists, education centers, contractors, and retail clients. Uh, and she does so much more. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Janet, and she's going to come and rock your world. Uh, well, we need about two minutes. Uh, oh. All right. So two minutes, and uh, I encourage you to grab a beer or a sandwich. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I'll tell my speakers. There you go. Is that you're presenting? Don't walk up to the camera and walk back. And you're giving people where to go. Okay. So I'm going to try to step back. Step forward. Step back. Focus is. 
It's fine. Oh, Thank you. Okay. Right. Sorry. Thank you for that. It's not ADA approved. <laughs> it's like that episode from the Simpsons. Oh, right. 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 I have to. Oh, you have to. That's where you got it. Oh, that's probably from your mouse. That's yeah. from my mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
One of the things, how many of you have heard of Pat Flynn? Okay, wow. Okay, well, now you know. you got to look up Pat Flynn because he's awesome. He has a really great podcast, and one of the things he teaches is be everywhere. So the goal of your business is to be everywhere. But, you know, the thing is, how easy is it to really be everywhere? Seriously, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, your blog, YouTube. I mean, is it difficult to be everywhere? Yeah. So we're going to show you, as Kimmy knows, yes, exactly. We're, we're going to cover today what we're doing to be everywhere, or as much as everywhere as we can possibly be in the most simplest way possible. So what we're going to cover is how one piece of content can push you everywhere, the pieces to set it all up, and, of course, why we're here, the SEO benefits. Number one thing we're going to do is set up a page on Google. Now, how many of you have a Google Plus page already? Page, not profile. Yes, she has her own page, too. Yes. And so we, we have a page, but not the, I'm not talking about the profile. You can use the profile for this if you'd like to. And some people are using their personal profile for the Hangouts, too. So that's up to you. And then the Hangouts on Air are linked to YouTube, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that piece. So what you want to do is brand that. This is our branding. See, Kimmy's famous. We've got her out on the web. And so, Hi, <laughs> so we're out there with the Google Plus page. Second step. Now, mo a lot of you are going to know these pieces, and then we're going to just kind of talk a little, <clears throat> dig a little deeper. So the next piece is setting up the channel, the YouTube channel. How many of you actually have a YouTube channel right now? How many of you are consistent? Keep the hands up if you're consistently posting videos. Okay. How many of you are doing that weekly? Okay. 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 So it's not an easy task, but it can have tremendous SEO benefits. And so what you want to do is uh, it automatically links that Google Plus channel to your YouTube. It actually when you do your first hangout, it will force you to do that. And so this is a branded one. This is ours. And we actually even brand all our thumbnails so that they're customized. And then this is what the cover looks like. So that's our channel with the video piece. <coughs> all right. And here, great picture of you, Kimmy. Really like this picture. That's awesome. Isn't it fun? You like my hair? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot more. Absolutely, and this is one we had so much fun, we'd like to hang out. I just wanted to show you a sample of what it looks like. You know what it kind of reminds me of? How many of you watched the show growing up that had like a bunch of squares? Who can name that show? Hollywood Squares. No? <laughs> close, close, that's a good one too. Brady no. Bunch. Thank Brady you, Bunch. thank you, Brady Bunch. <laughs> so it reminds me of the Brady Bunch, you know, where you have all the squares and different people pop in. And so we're going to link these together. So what we do is you, let you record through the Google Plus Hangouts on air. Then what you do is it's automatically uploaded to YouTube. But YouTube actually has editing, so you can edit in there. Or you can take and download that and optimize it, do whatever, you know, cut pieces, add intros, that kind of thing, and then re-upload it too. And then optimize that video. And we could have a whole entire training on optimization of YouTube videos. So five basics are keywords in the subject, the body, and the tags. So Kimmy, how much fun do you have doing your videos? Oh my gosh, they are just a riot. I'm just, I always worry about my eyelashes and my hair. Of course you worry about your hair. You know, watch video optimize, and it comes up on the search engine. Just look for social media puppet. <laughs> so social media puppet, Google that, and there we are. So that's one thing, uh, but so now we've covered two. Okay, we want to push it another step. So we this covers the two flat platforms, but we want to be everywhere. So we're going to talk about the last platform. And since Lisa doesn't have Lisa, the person behind the scenes, Kimmy doesn't have a microphone. She I want to give Lisa Celine credit. She's the one that set up our entire podcasting the podcasting area, and so I'm a little less familiar with this because, you know, we all take our pieces. So the podcast, though, if you are looking to do a podcast, just to save you a little bit of time, the hosting platform you want to go through, one of the best is called Libsyn. So that is where we actually host the podcast. 
And then what we do is the RSS feeds to Stitcher and feeds to iTunes. So can we talk about how we set that up? It was actually, you couldn't set up iTunes or Stitcher, correct? Right. You can't do iTunes or Stitcher until you've got your hosting account with Libsyn set up. And you want to be prepared and have your picture that's going to go on your podcast channel. You want to have an SEO description, just like you would write in a blog post. You want to make sure everything's titled, descriptive, and SEO. And then you want to make sure that you know what channels you want, when to publish your podcast. And you'll load your MP3 file, and it'll create an RSS feed. So you just take that feed, send it to iTunes, and it takes a while to get approved. Pretty smart puppet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you can read it there. But that's that's kind of how the setup works. Now there is more than just Stitcher and iTunes too, and you can. But wherever that RSS feed comes directly from Libsyn. So now we want to get into the SEO pieces of this. The SEO application, we're, now we're going to talk about specific ones. Number one is that with that weekly show, consistency, consistency in content is absolutely key. You need to prepare your audience for to expect it. Set the expectations and they'll come. And so that's the thing. You, uh, we do a weekly show. We're setting up a weekly show right now. We're going to be pushing it out twice a week for the first few weeks. And I'll talk about the reason for that. But it, Google, we are on two Google platforms for SEO by doing it this way. So YouTube optimization, it's one of the best ways to get on that front page of Google. And so that's, we're using that by doing Google Hangouts. And the one thing is, it's streamlining it for us. We've had, we have some incredible guests coming on. We interviewed some people yesterday. And they love, what was the question we asked them? What was the question we asked? Have you ever been interviewed by a puppet? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun because you get to be lighthearted and it's really, we have a good time. Yeah, and we teach, and we teach, you know, the bottom line is we are actually getting good lessons out there for them, but we're having fun doing it. And so this is using the Google Plus, but it's making it simpler. And for us, it's making it much simpler because we don't have to set up that whole video studio. So if any of you that raised your hands earlier and said, you know, I'm not getting those videos done, think about it. Think about your clients. How many, I mean, a lot of this room is working with a lot of clients that I'm interviewing my orthodontist offices. I sit at home on my computer and set up the interview in there. They have YouTube SEO power. Janet thinks it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have to wear pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hold it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> iTunes has its own search engine. Now, how many of you knew that iTunes alone, you just talked about this. You just talked about how, Adam, you talked about the Pinterest, the Facebook. But how many of you would have thought of iTunes as a search engine? It's a major search engine, and it's only growing. So if you're thinking about doing that podcast, it's a good idea. It's a great idea right now. And so you can actually find the podcast by keywords, subscribers, and reviews. And so one of the reasons we're pushing out the, for the first few weeks is because to get in the new and newsworthy, you really got to ramp it up when you first launch. And we are just launching right now. So SEO application four, and this is more about just even just pushing the content out. So every piece that we are doing, we are setting up a blog post with an embedded video, with our iTunes link, with everything in that blog post, and then we're sharing it out to all the social media sites that are out there. And then an added bonus is when you're interviewing highly influential people, they're excited to be on the show, so they're sharing it with all of their people that they're influencing. So it, it just adds a whole nother level to it. So see how the one piece of content can get you, Kimmy, where is it getting us? One piece of content gets us all everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and to finish up, just where can you find us? And Lisa, if you want to come out, you can, Kimmy, the Kimmy behind the curtain can come out. So socialmediahangouttime.com is our website, and you can sign up to receive the, you know, so that you know about every weekly show. 
You also could download this on iTunes. Who has an iPhone here? Raise your hand or hold it up. Okay, we have big favors from you guys. Download our podcast. Listen to it. If you like it, we would love, love, love a review. And don't talk about Kimmy's pink and green hair, whatever. You know, that's nothing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we want, would love a review because that's, that's the way the search engine optimization. And I'm JanetEJohnson.com, and this and is LisaLeeFleet.com. And if we also are looking for people to interview on our podcast. So if you'd like to be interviewed by a puppet, be one of the first ever in the world, <laughs> give us a call. And Janet, I think, Sam, that's perfect. Janet, I think you should plug yourself on your 15-minute <laughs> social. That's a good program. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have two programs. Um, one's called FB Contest Made Simple, and that one's more of a niche program talking all about Facebook contests. And then the other one's called 15 Minute Social. So you can look up either one of those, and you can find just it's a, a both online training programs that you can just go through on your own. When you guys do interviews, then you put them on your podcast, but can whoever you interview also have it on their site as well? So there's kind of double bang? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, absolutely. Cool. Mm -hmm. Kimmy is her own hangout. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all right. Well, thank you very much, Janet. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed this earlier when I was speaking, but uh, someone actually had their hand up my back making me talk. So uh, I'm getting lots of uh, evil, evil eyes. Yeah, uh, there you go. There you go. Adam, hand up your wife. Back. Yes, I said hand up my butt. Back. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I think Janet hit on a, a really important uh, theme, and, and that is, you know, content is so powerful, and you don't have to create ten different pieces to do one thing. You can create one thing and curate in ten different places in different ways. So if you know, you get like today, we're going to have this uh, whole hangout on Google Plus, right? And then it's going to go on YouTube, and then we can embed that in a blog post, and then we can write a content summary of it, right? So. As Janet was saying, use your assets um, as much as you can. <laughs> Try not to say that word anymore because I giggle every time I say it. Uh, and I'm stalling uh, because uh, someone's setting up behind me, but I'll, I'll do uh, the introduction while he's setting up. So um, Ron J. Miller's an amazing person. I've known him for, what, 12 minutes, 12 minutes or so? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I have nothing but good things to say about him for now. Uh, he's a great guy. So here's a little bit about Ron Jay. Um, he's a strategic consultant and designer who works with clients to engage their customers on the social internet. For the past 20 years, he's built digital product services and content for marketing, e-commerce, and social media. He writes and speaks on management, digital strategy, online influence, design thinking, and social networks. Uh, he also blogs for social media today and uh, I, I think you'll be very much entertained with his presentation on social media and SEO. So okay. without further ado. Yeah. And uh, my object is to get to the uh, discussion panel as quickly as possible. So we'll move through this quickly. Um, before we get started, I just I had a, okay. I figured this would be the only audience where I could tell like an SEO joke or anecdote that <laughs> would actually get a laugh. But uh, my first introduction with SEO was back in 2006 when Valspar Paint launched as a consumer brand, and my firm, Icon Nicholson in New York, built the Valspar.com website. We launched it on a Thursday, and the following Monday, my client called me up because the CEO had called him and said, I just typed paint into Google, and our search results aren't anywhere on that first page. <laughs> and I suddenly realized that I had completely forgotten to set proper expectations. So anyway, so very quickly I, I went in and I, you know, looked at the home page and quick checked the HTML and looked at all of the tags and nowhere did we have the word paint. We talked about color, we talked about beauty, nowhere did we say we're a paint company. So that was my second. The first one was set expectations, the second one was actually do the damn work. Uh, I'm going to talk about how social, local, and mobile, who you've heard of as solo mo, is really uh, subsumed by this broader movement of search, which is increasingly is becoming a reflexive behavior for trying to find information. 
What we really want to talk about is our vacation. Uh, this past summer, the Miller family went to Quebec for five days. We spent three days in Montreal, drove up river, and spent two days in Quebec City. And it was magnificent. If you have not been up there, um, Montreal is a, was a tremendous city. We went to museums, we went to restaurants, uh, we met people and had dinner with them, drove up to Quebec City, which has got to be one of the most beautiful cities in North America. Way up on a hillside with a fortress, it's, and the people are friendly, and it's just outstanding. Um, there's my wife, Claire. That's Claire. Hi, Claire. <laughs> so, obviously, on this, what we had to use was the phone because we wanted to find directions where we were going. We wanted to find where the hotel was. We wanted to see where restaurants were nearby. We wanted to look at social reviews to see, you know, which restaurants were good and what kind of food they had. Plan our itineraries. See what museum hours were. See what attractions they had. And all of that was terrific, except there was one drawback, and that was as we were driving back into the United States, we passed through the forests and the mountains of Maine, where there is no coverage. And as we came down into Portland, I got the bars back on my phone, and two minutes later, I got a call from AT&T saying, Mr. Miller, we're very sorry, but we have to tell you, you've run up a $1,200 bill searching for the last five days while you were in Quebec. <laughs> So the secret is you, you really you act stupefied, and what they'll do is they'll retroactively sell you a $200 a month Can-Am telephone package. So, but watch the roaming charge. <laughs> uh, it, it was the lesson to me about how immediate this and reflexive this process of pulling out our phone and looking for what we want, uh, especially you know during shopping seasons. So this creates this. Um, Venn diagram, which uh, is <coughs> social, which includes mobile, which we understand. And increasingly, Adam talked about how local is being worked out. And now we have this vast amount of social data that's uh, being uh, put out. Uh, in the intersections, we see between social and mobile, we have things like Foursquare. Between mobile and local, we have content marketing, e-commerce, the features that Google is offering. Between social and local, we have Instagram, Yelp, things that we share with. And in the heart of all three of those, we have search. Oops. Mobile ads per mobile user by location. So this is where people, where we do our searching. Number one, the mall. Number two and three, library and campus. We search in the hotel. We search in the airport. I'm surprised the airport isn't bigger because that's where I do all my searching. Big box retailers, quick service restaurants, electronic retailers. I don't even know why car dealers is on there, but they are. And clothing retailers. So we're seeing a broad range of activities. And this is the access that I think is so amazing. This is the number of mobile ads as a, as a metric that are served up in a month per user. So 70 mobile ads from malls on average for users in the mall. Sophistication with search of um, location search is increasing. The red is uh, geo-precision technologies. So these are geofencing. These are very precise forms of locating where you are specifically. The uh, gray portion is the standard geo, zip, city sort of kinds of searching. So they know I'm in Minneapolis, so they serve me Minneapolis things. And then this green is the run of network. So the, the amount of unclassified local searches that are being done is, has diminished. And that's Q1 of 2013. If we extrapolate out to 2014, it almost vanishes. One of the big problems that we have today is that as traditional marketing uh, channels lose their effectiveness and lose their audience, and digital content and search begin to replace that, the only problem is it's not increasing fast enough to replace the loss <coughs> in broadcast. And that's because we're spending our time doing all kinds of things that don't have anything to do with interruption or adjacency advertising. A guy named Bob Garfield, uh, who writes for the Chicago Tribune, 
wrote a brilliant essay called The Chaos Scenario, and I recommend all of you read it if, if you uh, want. It's in it, this is like three years ago, he pictures what the media landscape is going to look like in 2014 and 15 and 16, and he said it's just going to be chaos because we're going to have all these marketing dollars that have been allocated in the past to bring new customers in, and we won't be able to reach them. So this is why search becomes more and more critical, especially organic search, authentic forms of search, search that I can trust. Five hundred million search engine queries every day, and that's in the U.S. alone. Um, this. I, I couldn't believe it when I when I ran across this research, but social network traffic traffic um, in and of itself. If I can get my animation to work, um, adds. There we go. Thirty-three percent more content to the amount of information that has to be searched on the World Wide Web. So when you think about it, there's all that opinion out there that's now part of this whole world that's being indexed and searched. And we want that. We want to find that because we want to find those reviews. We want to find the, uh, what other people are thinking. That, that social content includes opinions, what's being discussed, uh, links, what's being shared between people, real time, what matters right now, and finally, what do my friends think? Facebook users share 30 billion links each month. Each week, Twitter users send out a billion tweets. 25% of all tweets contain a link. So that's 250 million tweets a week that have a link in them that, where someone is saying, I think this is valuable enough that I want all however many hundreds of followers you have, I want all of you to know about this. It's my endorsement of that. So there are three ways that social changes search. The first is obviously rankings, trends, and links that have value. We are learning to trust Google, and that's part of the primary power that they have. Um, there's content in terms of social messages, and then increasingly social search. What do people think? And this is one of the important components of the iTunes search, of Facebook search, and of Twitter. I think we're all familiar with this landscape of owned, paid, and earned media. The point here is to say, as we try to scale, we have to reach further and further into this earned media. And it's also where we lose control. So that means the message that we are generating here has to be a result not just of our messaging, but of <coughs> who we are as a brand authentically. How many of you saw the CBS uh, decision last week to stop selling tobacco products? OK. Um, so I, I wrote a piece in social media today where I said, well, again, was this an altruistic principle decision based on the core principles of what this company stands for? Or was this a really shrewd business move? And my point is the answer is yes. It's both. Um, you think about drugstores, how do you choose your drugstore? For most of us, it's Walgreens because they're closer, or it's CVS because they're closer. It's a commodity kind of marketplace that's very difficult to differentiate in. And now CVS has captured the first mover advantage by declaring that they, you know, we're here to take care of our customers. Therefore, we will not sell tobacco products. So now even if Walgreens says they'll do the same thing. It's just me too. It's me too following. Mm -hmm. So that authentic message, how do we capture that? That's where all of this uh, um, various kinds of uh, philanthropic alliances, um, we have to be very careful about the nuances of that. But it's going to be very central to driving our authority within social and our authority within organic search. Um, I think a great deal of the Susan B. Common foundation, we've seen a scattering of brands that have allied, and some work better than others, I think. 
you know, sometimes you look for that and you see, you'll play that kind of makes sense, but some of the others don't make as much sense. 40% uh, of all search today is mobile. This will make you feel better. 80% of it is controlled by Google. Uh, while we are speaking <coughs> digital channels, um, and, and they aren't scaling as much as they need to to replace the old channels, we are seeing growth. Everybody here, you know, I'd rather be in this business than steel making or car manufacturing. <laughs> I think, you know, it's a, at least it's a growth industry. Um, and as has been the case from day one, search is the overwhelming component of this. Brands really direct response display is something that they've kind of worked out pretty well, but you know, it, it still suffers in comparison to search, and brands are only now beginning to figure out how they can do display advertising, especially in context, and that's the strongest thing that Google offers. Uh, Small Business Saturday <coughs> follows Black Friday. By the way, Black Friday got its name not because of the clerk saying, oh dear God, here it comes, Black <laughs> Friday, but because that was about for many merchants the day that they actually turned a profit for the year was because of all the business. Small Business Saturday is the next day. It's in honor of going out and buying locally. Um, American Express grabbed it and did some very smart search marketing with it. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw this same thing this year. Um, I, I got an offer like this uh, from uh, American Express said if I spent $100 at Whole Foods, they would credit back a $25 amount on my account. So I don't know what Whole Foods paid for that, but I figured I could go shop at Whole Foods for a 25% discount for $100. Um, Solomo, sir. I was trying to coin that as a term. So that, you know, it's like Web 2.0, I would get credit for Solomo, sir. <laughs> Just doesn't have the poetry. Um, Neil Perkin writes a blog called Only Dead Fish over in the United Kingdom, and if you haven't had a chance to come across him, I would highly recommend him as weekly reading. He also puts together an anthology of links or of uh, posts around the internet, and then has a vote for the best post of the month. And the best post of the month is some of the best reading I found on the web. The title, Only Dead Fish, comes from a line in a poem by Auden, Only Dead Fish Swim with the Current. <laughs> so, and he was the first one to lay out this GAFA stack, which I think is um, significant in a number of ways. If you look at each of these companies, to some extent, in one way or another, they have a business play in this entire stack of payments, social media, context, access with browsers and applications, content, operating system, and hardware. Some, like Facebook, are going to do better in social media. Some, like Apple, are more hardware in their bones. But these are the four that are going to be competing back and forth as this landscape changes. And what's extraordinary for me to look at this is, who's not up there? Microsoft. Microsoft. <clears throat> Microsoft is not, the Department of Justice almost broke Microsoft into two companies, the Windows operating system and the applications back at the dawn of the 21st century to think that, and they still have that printing press down in the basement for Word and all those Windows licenses that just, you know, produce ridiculous profits. They're not in this landscape. And they haven't had the imagination to reinvent themselves. All of these companies except Apple didn't exist really in the 20th century. That's the extraordinary thing to me. I remember when Google was going to be the search engine that powered Yahoo, and we were all like, well, why would Yahoo do that? So, anyway. uh, so where in the world do we go? Uh, we have to be authentic. We have to drive from our business values, and that's a healthy conversation to have regardless of whether you're talking about search or anything to do with what we now call marketing. Um, it's easier to have at small corporations. 
but you can have that conversation within your team and within your business unit with your boss and your boss's boss. It's important that we decide what we stand for because if you don't stand for something, it'll stand for anything. Um, CMSs with SEO flexibility. This is just such an emerging area. Uh, how many people have worked with the Adobe Marketing Cloud? It's becoming more and more common around town. Part of it is that it's easy to roll out. Part of it is that they also allow you to do a lot with um, things like uh, featured snippets and uh, rolling context sensitive URLs so that the URL actually customizes to the context from where I came, those kinds of things. Um, there has to be some kind of cross, really cross departmental kind of task force that takes a look at how these are all affecting because it's not just marketing anymore. It's not marketing and sales. It's not marketing and sales and customer service. It's retention and advocacy. And all of those now are being driven through this digital spine of solo mode, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and of course, then the question is <laughs> to app or not to app? And to participate as part of a browser experience or I tell you, the next damn product that mm -hmm. LinkedIn, I just, I've had it, you know. Every time I try to go to my LinkedIn account in the browser, it's like, wouldn't you rather download our app? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, no. Some of <laughs> yeah, some of us. Uh, this is just an idea that I, I've been thinking through, and I'm, I'm not articulating it real well here, but it is the idea that social is really in so many ways how we now become aware of things. And search gives us the mechanism for the new attraction. This is how we actually get attracted and engaged with brands or products or services. Mobile really drives the ongoing engagement. Um, as I'm going around and I'm trying to find things on Saturday and running my errands, and I keep getting brought back to Home Depot because they have an awful lot of solutions for me and they're closer than Lowe's. Um, and then local is the new transaction. Um, the growth that Adam talked about in Google's presentation of local results, that it is about where I am physically right now, even if it is Montreal at $200 a day, it's really important. So with that, my thanks. And uh, any questions, I'd be happy to answer in the context of the panel. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that was that was absolutely fascinating. And, and uh, yeah, so, solo mo. Solo mo, sir. Solo, sir. Sir, sir. Yeah. By the way, always carry a bag of every kind of adapter you can. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Never can have enough dongles. No. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to bring three. We're going to bring three. Okay. Great. So uh, this is going to be a really fun uh, time to have with three amazing search marketing inbound marketing professionals. Um, so when I moved to Minneapolis or Minnesota, Twin Cities, in uh, 2012, uh, I was fortunate to attend a, a, an MN Search event, the Minnesota Search Engine Marketing Association event. And I was really impressed with uh, the, the quality of the people, um, the leadership. And, and so I was fortunate enough after I joined uh, a few months later to, to be accepted uh, onto the board and met three amazing people who I'm going to introduce to you right now. Um, they've all had quite a bit to drink tonight, so there uh, <laughs> aren't any uh, unusual hiccups or any, anything that happened. So uh, first is Dustin Thompson. He's uh, the sponsorship director of MN Search. And, you know, since we've been speaking about drinking uh, and sponsoring, just kidding, bad joke. All right, so uh, he's a paid search specialist, founder of Connected Interactive. He runs his own business, and uh, it's a fantastic business. Uh, Susan Stalpe, she's the uh, one of the embed directors of MN Search, uh, and uh, she is also a senior SEO specialist at Nifty Marketing. And then uh, we have... Manos, and I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name. Uh, what, what's that? College Lincoln. So <clears throat> there you go. He's the Greek god of SEO. Well, just the Greek god of SEO, Manos K. 
All right. Okay. That's what we'll do. Okay. That really is a right. nickname. I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, great. So, all right. So, uh, folks, come on up. Um, and we've got three seats. Uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, they're they're right here. And so, um, what uh, what we've asked uh, these folks to do is to share a little bit with you about the future of SEO um, and and what the future of SEO future looks like. And we're all being very entertained watching Susan sit. <laughs> I, can't this is great. I have a short one. Back. I have her short shirt on. I told you, you, told you she's, she's been drinking. <laughs> oh, shit. <gosh. laughs> Here, not too much. There you go. All right. So, uh. Oh, uh, <laughs> lover. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I have to put my weight on. <laughs> Apparently. It's hydraulics, it's uh, all the cutting edge. So, um, so we'd like uh, the three of you, uh, if you wouldn't mind just opening up with. Uh, uh, a few words about where you see the future of, of search going, maybe some in insights on some algorithms. We know hummingbirds out there. We know uh, panda, penguin, all those fun Google Zoo animals. Uh, anyway, we'd love to hear your thoughts, so if you wouldn't mind. Manos, okay. if you want to kick us off. Uh, I'll go first. Um, so the future of SEO. I'm sure over the next, you know, it's still early in 2014, so I'm sure over the next few months, Google is going to come up with a new update. Uh, somebody's going to, you know, in the media is going to write that SEO is dead, just like it happens every single year. Uh, and I guess I'm here to tell you that SEO is not dead. Uh, you know, a lot of you work in agencies, a lot of you work internally. As you will see, there's a lot of sites out there just that suck. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, <laughs> a, that, that's, what, that's why we still have jobs because, you know, um, you know, every single site out there needs SEO work. There's very few people, very few sites, very few organizations that actually do it right. So, and that's where we come in. That's why you know we're here. That's why we optimize. So, uh, SEO is not dead. I don't think it's going to be dead. Uh, we just adapt and evolve over time to you know cover all the new things that happen. So, in terms of uh, you know what's what's hot and what's trending or what's going to be happening next, uh, in my opinion, is uh, you know as you as you've probably seen over the past year, content strategy and content marketing are actually big. Um, you know, everything that we preach is good content, uh, in-depth content, content that adds value, uh, content that's not just content to, uh, you know, we don't write just to write, uh, we don't write, you know, 500 pages to target 500 different keywords anymore. So it's a lot of, uh, I guess it's a lot of work to, you know, do all that, all that I guess, uh, planning up front and being able to put up a site that actually makes sense, that makes sense to your user, that, you know, when somebody visits it, uh, will be able to find the information that they need and actually take an action. Um, apart from that, uh, you know, we covered a lot of social, uh, you know, authorship and author rank are the, you know, the best thing they have. It's just sliced bread, I guess. Uh, and even though I'm not necessarily, um, like Adam said, you know, social and SEO, uh, I don't necessarily believe that you know having links or tw from Twitter or Facebook or really anywhere else is going to help your SEO and help you rank better, especially in a competitive industry. But at the same time, being engaged in social media and creating that buzz around your brand mm -hmm. and your organization is what creates those links because people will know about you, they will write about you, they will cover your products and services, and they will link to you from their sites and all that stuff. So I think it's a byproduct of social. Um, and then there's different things. I think uh, over time, um, I'm also against, you know, I'm biased against Google, I guess. Just over time, uh, they're taking away real estate from the home page, from the front page. So it's, it seems that SEO results keep getting pushed down further and further and further, mm -hmm. uh, which puts us at a, at a disadvantage. And you know, with the open graph going mm -hmm. on, so at this point, you know, everybody said that hummingbird, which uh, soon is going to is going to target a little bit and is going to talk to you about, kind of lets Google know that you know, it's kind of exactly what you're trying to get out of it. But at the same time. Back in the day, you could get, you know, you would ask a question on Google and find an answer through a site. Now you don't have to do that. If you say, you know, if you're looking at uh, credit cards, or if you're looking at, uh, you know, travel, or if you're looking at anything, you type anything. Most of the time, you don't even have to leave Google. You can find your answer right at the top there, or on the right side, the top right. So that puts us at a disadvantage. But again, at the same time, <laughs> every single site needs to be well optimized. Good content needs to be written, analytics, and all that stuff. So. Uh, I think we're just evolving. Nothing, nothing is definite. So, I think I. You oh, oh, okay. 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 Sorry. My bad. Um, so I worked with Manos off and on for five.
five years. That's the most I've heard, ever heard him talk about. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, we're going to give him on us a stool to carry around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dustin. Uh, like Adam mentioned, uh, technical <coughs> SEO, the, fo the foundation of your site is, is still a huge thing that I see a lot of sites don't, they're not doing it right. And you'd be surprised at what type, what type of traction you can get just by getting those fundamentals <coughs> right. Um, in 2014, I think Google's going to keep, you know, like Miles mentioned, uh, more updates, updates to their, their algorithms to penalize people for their the, uh, heyday of SEO where you could build 10,000 directory links in 10 minutes and rank number one. Uh, so I'd say one of the things that I'd suggest everyone do is take a look at what links you currently have to your website and try to look at what risk you might have moving forward. Because if you do have a lot of the spammy links where you have a you know 2,000 directory links, you have a bunch of forum uh, forum links, those type of things, you're gonna want to try to get rid of those before something bad does happen. I think the other big thing for SEO moving forward in terms of you know link building, uh, offset promotion, it's really gonna be more of taking uh, a traditional marketer's look at the world and trying to build your brand. And building your brand can be done through uh, you know, great content. Obviously, you want great content. But if they say, build it and they will come, they're lying to you, you need to promote your content. So some of the things that I see becoming more and more prevalent, uh, sponsored content or uh, native advertising. So creating really great content and then paying to make sure people see that. Um, those links in themselves aren't going to help you, but they are going to drive traffic. They're going to expose your brand to a larger audience. And with that, you're going to be able to improve your SEO through those people who are now sharing your content, learning about it, and linking about it. And then I think the other big approach that all SEOs have to start to make is uh, creating content through data. So looking for what people actually want, what do they need. Uh, looking through Quora, for example, which is a Q&A site, and, saying, and looking for what problems do people really have that I can answer through my content that people will actually link to and they'll share it, instead of just saying, Hey, I know a lot about this topic. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start writing about it, and hopefully, people come to my site. If you're creating resources and content, and uh, you know, if you're a home, if you're a mortgage broker, maybe you create one of the best guides to actually, you know, buying your first house. That type of content is what's actually going to work in the future. It's not targeted towards the search engines. It's not targeted towards, uh, you know, the keywords you want to rank for. It's targeted towards the person you want to walk in your door for buying your website. Mm -hmm. I agree completely with both what uh, Manos and Dustin said. Um, mine's a little more focused, though, and I know we have a really diverse group, so I just want to ask how many people do know what how many. Yeah, no, it, it's just that's great that there's actual people that aren't totally into SEO that um, know that. But basically, Hummingbird is the, the new algorithm, the search algorithm, and it's not the same as Panda and Penguin. Panda and Penguin were updates to the old search algorithm, and it'll continue to update, but it's basically a brand new engine. I think Danny Sullivan mentioned in his post on the 26th, the best analogy I've ever heard, it's like a 1950s engine that's getting replaced, but still using some of the old parts from the last mm -hmm. one. I mean, I think that's the best way to describe it, but I think it's all about user intent, I think it's all about topics versus keywords. I think it's all about getting those bad links fixed in 2014. And I think it's all about um, basically topics versus keywords in the sense that it's about the specific question and not just, I mean, I, people used to make fun of me. Daniel, I think you were one of them at Fine Law. Um, <laughs> But I type in a question in my in my search, and people are like, oh, that's not how you search. <laughs> um, but that's what it is now. And they pay attention to every single word, and they pay attention to the meaning of every single word since Hummingbird. It's not just the keywords anymore. So you got to get away from that keyword concept, in a, in a sense, and really focus on categories, focus on topics, and how do you answer the user's question. It's all about user intent, and it's all about content in 2014, in my opinion. Yeah, that's really great. That's really good input. Um, so before we go deeper, any questions for our forum? 
Uh, yeah, it's a very weird question. What do, you, what do you guys think about affiliate marketing? Is it still in affiliate marketing? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess that's a little bit, I would have to talk to you a little bit. What are you trying to accomplish? Okay. I mean, affiliate marketing, it's... <laughs> She's worked for Lisa. Lisa. You know, She's the affiliate manager. She's the affiliate manager. So well, yeah. are you going to be? Are you trying to be affiliate, or are you trying to be? Are you trying to create an affiliate network? To uh, I'm trying to be affiliate. You're trying to be an affiliate. Well, the affiliate space in general, the affiliate space, and of course, it depends on the industries. So it's hard. Um, anyway, so I mean, there's a lot of different things that uh, that you can definitely do as an affiliate. Uh, there's still affiliates, there's super affiliates, and the very small affiliates that just do, you know, even AdSense. Can we consider affiliate? So uh, I guess it's a little bit more of a complicated <coughs> problem. Uh, but yeah, affiliate is definitely still a very big part of, uh, you know, search gets used quite a bit. Well, speaking to that, uh, it depends on your treat. Speaking to that, Adam's company is very committed to affiliate yeah. marketing, so the lives. You should talk to Adam. I don't know if I'm the right person, but yeah, I mean, affiliate affiliate space is, is you know, um, if you're a good affiliate and you've got a good reputation and you spent time building out um, your your properties, I think I think you'll you'll do okay. Um, one of the really challenging things, and this might be, I don't know if if, if you guys have any insight into this, but Google uh, doesn't really like affiliates at all, uh, except for the affiliates that Google owns and runs and operates, like we tell me not, uh, those are fine. But if you're operating an affiliate, Google doesn't like that, so they don't return you that well in, in search results. But so Amazon over Google, you would say? Amazon more? Amazon isn't Minnesota. It yeah. doesn't yeah. have it anymore. Well, so no. you it's the bummer for You're going to be an Amazon affiliate in Minnesota mm -hmm. and have a Minnesota uh, address. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I cannot. Not on Amazon. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Amazon true. dropped. Minnesota, Minnesota about a year ago. Because of the tax oh, yeah. issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there you go. So maybe you should take SEO off. No, I'm kidding. Affiliate, affiliate. I will say to you, just to add on to what I was saying about content. I think the other aspect of search in 2014 is all about brand. And I know you do a ton of A/B testing. And I don't know if you've seen. Um, we've seen a lot of um, title tags getting rewritten by Google if you don't have the brand name in it. So make sure, I know you covered title tags earlier. The most important thing to the, to the left, make sure you finish it off with your brand name to the right. Yeah, Google will rewrite your titles and your meta descriptions that return if, um, depending on the query that the user is searching. So, um, you know, I, I, we've seen it numerous times, and what Google's trying to do is give the best result for the search itself, not just the page. So, yeah, a question. Let me ask a oh. question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. cool. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to ask, but you know, we, we heard earlier about the impact of mobile, and certainly all of us in the space understand the role that mobile plays. And we look at Hummingbird, and we understand that searches are in the context of a question, so we're looking at the semantic world. Where do you think we are? I know a lot of this is pointing towards, I mean, here on my Nexus phone, I've got the feature. On my Galaxy mm -hmm. tablet, i got the feature to where I do voice-activated searches. Yes. And it looks like we're really... If, you know that the players that are really uh, controlling the uh, game board are saying we're preparing for more of that voice activated mm -hmm. search so we can understand the context of search. But at the same time, I'm not totally convinced that a lot of searches are being done through voice. Do, what is your sense for, or do you feel like are we close to turning that corner, or is that even? I would say no, just because the technology is into a point where people are comfortable using voice search. It's still, you know, when you get a new iPhone, you use Siri for a day because it's fun. And then, and then you're and like, well, it. this is just a pay, and I can, I'm faster. <coughs> and then you call Siri and tell her you're drunk, and she's like, yeah. yeah. Well, my, <laughs> so that's all I use yeah, Google's actually pretty good about it, but I, I've always heard about the Siri issue. Yeah, but. Siri's. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think people are comfortable with the technology yet, mm -hmm. and I just don't think the technology itself is caught up to what people can do typing. And I think technically right now you have to almost optimize that, mm -hmm. um, or you have to be anything verbal is like video to me. I mean, do you know what I'm trying to? My point I'm trying to make. It's like it's got to. <laughs> um, it, it has to be translated somewhere into text because the search engines don't know anything other than text and code. 
Yeah. You know what I I'm, so I think technology again is is a huge issue. Sorry. Was around no, that was that was a really good. Uh, and that's, that brings up it's a really interesting point uh, that remember search engine spiders are just code uh, text readers. Yet they have all these these advanced functionalities and technologies that they tell you they'll get you. But at the, at the end of the day, you know we're still a dumb bot. It's right? text and code. Well, who was so? I, I just question. wanted to comment that you know when you talked about Siri and I use Siri a lot, mm -hmm. but I also use Dragon. Mm -hmm. If anybody's ever tried to use that, it takes a long time to get that to work correctly. Mm -hmm. And that, and I, I kind of put Siri in that same thing. Yeah. You had to go through that and so. learning curve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. There's some more yeah. questions. I want to make sure we get to everyone. Uh, I have a question more directed toward SEO measurement. Mm -hmm. So I was curious of knowing where you think the future of SEO measurement is going. Because for myself personally, I see. <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Because there's no humor. Like social media measurement. Not provided. I'm sorry, I can't see. I can see you. I see SEO measurement in the future really going in a direction that kind of relates to what you were saying before as far as relationships. Um, when you look at a platform like Pinterest and you have so many searches that are related to the same page or the same pin, and then taking that a step further in after looking at that first pin, looking at the second pin. And it just seems like that pattern of finding the second step is something that comes up time and time again in different web applications and developments as how to measure it. So I was just curious to know what do you think? You're the analytical guy. She's a numbers girl. <laughs> well, I think the steps, I guess, you know, what what's I guess what happens on Pinterest and before you Well Pinterest is just an example. Right. But um yeah, I, see. I just yeah. kinda see things where it's like you are like with Pinterest, you're given a search or you use a search. Right. But that search is also related to other things. So you're starting to build a web. Right. And so as an analyst you have to come in and try to understand that web. So not only are you understanding the first search, you're trying to relate things that contribute to the third and second. So. Sorry, that's not a hint to hurry up. <laughs> 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 if you have something to say, because I, I know you, you seem like you have started to. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no I, I was just going to, I think what she was getting to, just to clarify the question was, uh, in terms of, of apps, right, like other third, like we can do that on our websites, right? We can measure with whether it's the Adobe Cloud or it's Google Analytics. Right. But what about these, you know, we're not just talking about our websites anymore. I think when you're referring to the really website optimization or footprint optimization, right? Mm -hmm. So on these sites like Pinterest or <laughs> Twitter or uh, Amazon, right, how do, you, how do you track consumer behavior on those sites and understand once they get to wherever they're going, what do they do next? And, and do you see anything coming from those types of sites to help uh, marketers better understand what's happening? Well, I think in general, with any any types of any of those sites, like Pinterest or anything, uh, anything that has some kind of uh, you know any site that can put a relationship together within the site itself, I think Amazon is the best example of that. And being able to you know, I mean, they have it down from software science, right? So uh, Amazon is one of the sites that I always present as a great, one of the best examples of SEO. And uh, just because, just every time you search something, kind of like you say, they actually give you uh, related products. They're, so just by looking and trying to, in, in a sense, reverse engineer of what they, they provide to you. So the, 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 the most amount of time that I spend on Amazon is not necessarily to shop, is to do what you're talking about. Just kind of try to figure out how Amazon is actually trying to relate, um, trying to put a relationship between what I'm typing in and what they think I need. So a lot of stuff has to do with I don't know. I mean, like it's the engine themselves, and I don't necessarily I can't necessarily tell you anything about measure um, because measure in my head has more to do with just being able to track something in Google Analytics, for example or in any type of analytics software and being able to, to figure out user behavior when somebody gets to your site. I think I think the majority of the time in order to get something like what you're talking about, you try and try to mine all that data is a lot of uh, 
I guess my had a lot of uh, uh, manual work, being able to go in and kind of try to see how they try to force you to take different paths mm -hmm. and how kind of like trying to figure out the logic itself. Um, so I guess I don't necessarily have a great great answer for no, you. No, that's okay. I know it's a loaded a loaded question. <laughs> I, so well, yeah, really I, mean, really I, I mean I think just one thing I would say is like if you're doing SEO, your main measurement, no matter what, should just be whatever the business objectives are. Right. And so you, if you want to measure other things, that's great, but they all have to lead back to you know, in sales, in leads, whatever it is. Or if you are simply, hey, I want more <laughs> brand impressions, that's a business objective, that's a goal, that can be measured as well. Mm -hmm. And in terms of you know, the social measurement, I mean, there's a million tools out there that can help you do those things. Um, but I really think you just need to say, you know, will all those new Twitter mentions, what does that actually give us? Um, I think a lot of times you see a lot of SEOs and people in this industry who <coughs> blog about a lot of metrics that don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important just to always keep in mind what the end game is. Uh, uh, can I just add on that? Just to get to because I heard it going in one direction, I decided to go another. Are, we, are you talking about kind of like the dynamic personalization of what happens to content yes. when somebody hits a site. Is that where you were going to? With like, okay, I've got this data, I've got the second set of data, so now I can plan on what I'm gonna, where I'm going to take this user. Yeah, because she it, wants it doesn't deeper. necessarily have to be related to social media content. It's no, just, um, Pinterest is the best example that I can use that has that type of data platform where it is taking one thing and switching it out to a relationship. That was the easiest one I could think of. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you were kind of more talking about a personally driven content. Well, dynamic. yeah, and that's how I measure that. Oh, right, right. But every right. Time, they just, you know, okay. serve your product. So trying point. to keep up. So I think we're, I think we're being uh, uh, asked to move out of this room. Yeah, uh, if we can just wrap up, up the hangout, the hangout uh, piece and just continue it Yeah, if here. there are any questions, uh, we'll be around. Uh, definitely ask us. I know we have <coughs> some, so yeah, Jeannie has questions, and, and so we'll hang out out there, not hang out there. Out. And then, it's uh, much cooler out it's there. It's much cooler yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. We need to turn into a bar. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for joining us. It'll be on YouTube. Uh, see you at the next hangout. <laughs>